Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Donnie. Just turn it down just a little more. We got to get the intro music. We're going to do that at the end of the intro. Okay. This is the beginning of the yeah. intro. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rodeo Time, the podcast. We've got a new man in the house, Everett. What's your last name? Eggleston. Everett Eggleston. He, uh, he's not even been here 24 hours. He's already been on camera more here than he has ever in his life, yep. apparently. We'll talk about that later. And, um, yeah, we're just going to talk about his dreams of rodeoing and what brought him here. And um, we did, I never asked, what's, like, the first video you saw of Dale Brisby's? Or your favorite, one of the two. I think the Super Puncher video. That was the one that got puncher. you? I think so, yeah. Like like me on Boone out at West Camp, that yeah. one? Yeah, that was a classic. Um, So, yeah, we're going to talk to him about that. We're going to talk to Joe and Donnie, get some insight. <laughs> yep, yep, that's Joe and Donnie. And then we're going to hear from Dale Brisby. Oh, wrong button. Oh, yeah, that's Dale, there's Dale Brisby. <laughs> so, stick around, great podcast. Text the word podcast to 940-353-0890. That way that you can, uh, I can keep you in the loop on when we post these. So, do that. And then don't forget to check out dalebrisby.com where you can find all the goods. we got new long sleeves. We've got um, new caps, new hoodies, new short sleeves. Like, we got all kinds of new stuff in. So, check out dalebrisby.com. And now on to the podcast. Yes. Rodeo time, 78. Are you nervous? A little bit. Into the mic, please. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, you can bring it to you. So Why are you nervous? Me. Never done anything like this. This is his fifth time on camera ever in his life. Okay. Sixth. He was on camera this morning. We went and fed cows at West Camp. Um, Yeah, so this is a new intern. His name is Everett. Give my arm here. Tell us about yourself, Everett. Uh, I grew up in... Small town Iowa. I'm like running on like less caffeine than normal. You don't <laughs> seem like that's it. What, you don't seem like it. I so like I took like half a spark this morning, maybe less than. Because like you just told Everett <laughs> to start talking about <laughs> himself, and then all of a sudden you're like <laughs> explaining yourself. Okay, <laughs> I'm just that boring. We'll talk right. about we'll talk about me later. <laughs> Iowa is that what you said? Yep. Small okay. town Iowa. Small town Iowa. What else? Uh, what about small town Iowa? What'd you do in high school for fun in small town Iowa? Stupid stuff. Like, we like to hear about stupid stuff. Yeah, tell yeah. us about your stupid stuff. I mean, all sorts of stupid stuff. Uh, <laughs> drift busting on on dirt roads in the winter. Drift busting? Yeah. What's get, that mean? You get the wind, we'll push the snow across the dirt roads, and a buddy that has a truck, he'll just go out there and slam through them. And, just drive know. through snow, snow banks? I mean, you're in Iowa. What else do you have to do? Right. There's not much. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know. There's that not I've, much. It's, it's, that kind of stuff, and going to school and playing sports, at least in a small school. I've I've been to. Have you been to Sydney? No. We were yeah. just, we were just somewhere in Iowa. <laughs> I've I've been to the Sydney, Iowa, that rodeo, um, home of. Uh, uh, crap. Who's from Who's from Iowa? I was just talking about it the other day. Tim O'Connor. Hambone. Oh. Hambone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that part was like rolling a little bit, had some roll to it and a few trees, but that's not all of Iowa, right? Most no, of that, Iowa. That's more southern Iowa. Yeah, Closer which is Sydney. Yep. Right. Yeah, so so most of Iowa is flat. Where I'm from, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm towards the northeast. Cedar Falls. Ever heard of you and I, northern Iowa? No. No. Smaller university. Okay. So that's where I'm close to. Is that where you were going to go? So, college was fun for me. Three years, three different schools. Oh. So, I went to UNI for a year. I uh, didn't find anything there I liked. I uh, didn't have ag or anything, and I had never been around agriculture, really. Uh, so, then I went to a community college close to home, and then my third year, I went to Iowa State. So, okay. 
What? So what? What had you? And then, so you then you realized college or school itself wasn't for you. Yeah, uh, I guess right. Yeah, I took I took the fall off. I was working. I was gonna go back in the spring, but now I'm here. This is better than school. So bingo. <laughs> This is when school really begins. I remember you saying something like, you could teach me more than any professor or any book could, so. Yes, I can. I don't remember saying that. It sounds really <laughs> arrogant. I don't, remember, I don't remember what it was, but I remember. I know Did you I use it. those exact words? I think so. That's, that sounds like me. I think, I'll I teach think anything was, more than some Yeah, I think it was dumb. in the intern video <laughs> that you sent out, like yeah. on, the, on the text. That wow. Would, that would make sense why you got so many people wanting to be an intern. Yeah. <laughs> Talking like, people out of going to school. Yeah. yeah. I Well, <laughs> don't get me started. I do think, especially for someone like you, you know, you you tried it. You didn't want it. You know, it, it didn't appeal to you. So, and you're, what do you want to do with your life? Talk to me. I honestly have no idea. Which is fine. But like at least a direction or an industry. Probably still agriculture. Something that's, in ag. That's what I was doing before I came here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, th- I don't know. Degrees are good for people. Degrees, I mean, you got to have, if somebody's going to be a lawyer, somebody's going to be a doctor, somebody's going to be, I mean, there's some specific trades that you got to have a degree for. Nothing under this roof. <laughs> Nothing under this roof. Yeah. Even my, my uh, our bookkeeper, accounting lady, she... Um, unapologetically makes more money than anyone here. No degree. Yep. She has probably the most important job and the most tedious, but, uh, yeah, not even, not a stitch of college. Um, you're wanting to be a bull rider. Yes, I am. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Tell me about that. Why? Um, so where I'm from, it's not really that like common. Uh, pretty much I had one buddy growing up that, I remember in fourth grade, like, we had this. It was not like your idol, but just, like, someone you look up to. He did J.B. Mooney. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, that's tough son of a gun. So You looked up to J.B. or you looked one up of, to One him? of my buddies did. Like, he did a presentation over somebody that uh, gotcha. he looked up to. And his family was into rodeo a little bit. His cousins rode bulls. And uh, he was the first person I watched, like, eight seconds with. Uh huh. And so, I don't know. It always just really appealed to me. That's kind of what you get up in Iowa. And this is what age? What's the earliest you can remember all this? Uh, the JB with my buddy thing was in fourth grade. You've been wanting to ride bulls since fourth grade. It got planted in my mind in fourth grade. When when do you think you decided you wanted to get on a bull? When I really wanted to get on, I was probably like 17 or 18. Gotcha. A little more recent. Yeah. You're 21? Yes, sir. Yeah. Gotcha. So about four years it's really been on your mind. Yep. You're signed up to go to a Sankey school in December, Derby, Kansas. Yes, sir. Gotcha. That's uh, about seven weeks away, a little less than two months away from right now. So that'll be good. That'll be good. We're going to try to get you some uh, – we're going to play it by ear. I'm going to get you on Boone, get you um, on a drop barrel, Joe Will. Um, shoot procedure, on and off the bull, dismount. All that stuff, let you go over that. That way, when you get to the school, maybe you've just got a little bit of a foundation built. So, And then uh, JB might come by before the finals. So we do have a new shirt. I'm surprised you didn't get that one. It was close. I forgot about it because it was all the way over there in the boxes. Nobody remembers 85-point bull rides, and it's a picture of JB gritting it out. So check that out, dalebrisby.com, plug. Anyway, um, this morning, I went out about, it was like 7.05. You were walking across the deal. You had a bag of feed. And I said, uh, morning, girls. And you said what? And guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <clears throat> oh, man. have you not seen Lonesome Dove? No. Son oh, of no. a... Donnie, this is your guy. Yeah. Hey, man, that's the first wrong answer he said. That's true. Um, was, somebody asked me that over text message. I was honest. That was me. That was me. And he didn't watch it. Yeah, that was my. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't take the hint. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Also, I'm pretty bad at taking hints, I guess. No, it's okay. Yeah. Well, I, you are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, but 
sometimes, you know, you just got to come out and explicitly say what someone needs to do. And I think in this scenario, you need to uh, watch Lonesome Dove. There's got to be somewhere you can stream it. Um, you, maybe uh, Prime. But I, I'm not 100% sure if you can. Somebody speak. has it because there's been interns here recently that have not seen it. Noemi, does Gabe have it? Oh, it's on Amazon? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Oh, gotcha. I watch it on Amazon all the time. Gotcha. Do you have Amazon Prime? I don't remember yes, if I had I do. to buy it. I didn't it. know it was on there. I haven't Bingo. been on there in a long time. Yeah. So for those of you out there that uh, want to be interns in the future, um, go ahead and watch yourself some Lonesome Dove. That's one uh, prerequisite. Um, the more interns we have, I think we're going to have to make it more of like a, a sure enough prerequisite. Yeah. From here on out. Yeah, from here on out. Yeah. Watch the dang movie, people. Mm-hmm. It's an Americana classic. Have you seen The Office? Yes. Okay, good. Thank I'm God, done. Everett. <laughs> <laughs> Heart racing a little bit, Donnie. In case you haven't noticed, Donnie was a huge um, proponent. Or what would, what would that advocate. word be? Advocate. A huge advocate for Everett coming to it. Winnebago. So don't F this up for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we all were. We were all fans. You made the top ten. And then we had some tiebreakers, some of which I'm not going to mention here on the uh, on the on the podcast. But there were some easy tiebreakers that ruled a lot of people out. So, and then ultimately, when it came down to the wire, you put yourself in the final two. We got another one coming. He was supposed to be here the same day as you, but he got he got um, sick with some stuff. And uh, yeah. So anyway, um. <clears throat> What else? What else about Everett Eggleston? What do you want to get out of this? Uh, I don't know. I I was really coming down here just hoping to learn. I mean, you saw me this morning. I feel like I didn't have a clue what was going on. Fish out of water? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would worked with hogs a little bit in Iowa. Not too much, but, I mean, there's not much cattle around. Yeah, hogs won't kick you. Yeah. yeah. They might eat you. Y'all, if they get you down. Nasty suckers. <laughs> Fortunately, my cows are pretty gentle, and we feed bags all around them a lot. But um, so y'all didn't get kicked when you kind of snuck up behind them that one moment. But um, what could should he expect, Joe? As being an intern, yeah. I mean, about putting yourself out there, you better be prepared for that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for a guy that's only been on camera six times in his whole life, he's done pretty good so far. Like it, that little interview. We did yesterday. I thought he did all right. I mean, that might be an exaggeration. I don't go out of my way to get on camera. And, like, videos. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You lied to me? (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, it's not very much. Okay. I don't don't sit in front of a camera. Do you avoid them? Or you just haven't? Videos I usually tried to avoid in the past. Why? I don't know. Just not used to it. Yeah. I didn't like it. Okay, so there's not like a specific reason, like, but because c- you know you you now work for a YouTuber, yes, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. I, I hey, it's all about getting out of your comfort zone. Every now and then, we got to say like, who's willing to be on camera, and everybody raise their hand. Are you willing to be on camera? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know that's something I talked about in the in the video. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so you got to be willing to put yourself out there. What else, Joe? I mean. Just working hard, like giving it everything you got. Mm. Like just I'm doing my best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um how's he been doing feeding? He's been good. Yeah, it's only been day two, two days. <laughs> yeah, day two. Yeah. He he kinda told on himself it's she didn't throw you under the bus. He said he was late yesterday. Yeah, I did not I did not say that, but I did tell him I was like this was DV. Like nobody's gonna come get you out of the bunkhouse. I said, I said if 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 you're supposed to be somewhere, you get there five minutes early, or else you're getting left. <laughs> yeah, we've had a few people experience that. Yeah, it I, was it was stupid of me. It was all my fault. I wasn't asleep or anything. I I was just kind of waiting there, and then I heard the truck, and then I heard the can am start, and I was like, oh crap! I looked out the window, and there Joe went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you weren't that late. Yeah, no. no I, I walked out there then. Yeah, no. I uh, I didn't even know that. So, uh, Katrin's been training me in the mornings. So, I've been uh, up here. And I usually work out in the mornings anyway. But even with the, when I'm not getting trained. But, um, so yeah, so I was already up here. 
by about 6.15, so I didn't even know. But uh, but that's good. I like honesty, and I like whenever you're, you know, you're up front with us. So what is it that you think, now that you've seen the inside of the honeycomb, um, what is it that you think where you'll best fit in? Like, what do you want to do? What job do you want to do? You may not know yet. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I knew exactly what, but... I mean, as long as I just keep doing stuff, I'm sure I'll find something yeah. that I really like. Yeah. What is it that you're willing to do? Or is there something you've 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 seen us been doing that you're not willing to do? No. You I'm down here in Texas from Iowa. I'm, I'll do about anything. My man. It's a long drive. My long man. drive back home. This is Donnie's <laughs> It says Donnie's, Donnie's boy. <laughs> I didn't realize, uh, I, I forgot how close Iowa was to Missouri. Maybe it's He okay. was born in Missouri. I was born in Missouri. Where are you? Where? Kansas City. Okay. As if it mattered. You know, <laughs> the, the four towns in Missouri that I know of. That's uh, one of them. That, that is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So born in Missouri and you came here to ride bulls. What did you think of last night riding about Willie getting on bulls? That was... Yeah, that was my first time actually being like up close and personal with it. Uh, I really liked that. It yeah. was fun. I I didn't want to mess up, especially I was pulling Willie's rope. I didn't want to, I don't know, mess him up or get him flustered. So I was trying to do my best. But again, kind of that fish out of water just wasn't wasn't sure exactly what to do, but trying to get it done the right way. Um, so but you've been to a rodeo. Yes, sir. You just hadn't been like on the back of a shoot. No, back of the bucking shoots. Yeah. I think we're going to buck again, maybe this evening sometime. Um, hmm. Did it make you feel like your dreams were, like, obtainable at that point, like, of being a bull rider because you got to be that close to it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, it was kind of this pipe dream. I mean, mm-hmm. even, what, a year ago. It was just kind of something I was like, oh, like, you got to be in it. It was the same thing for ag- agriculture for me. It was like, you got to be in it from – when you're real young, you can just kind of grow up in it, and that's kind of where you go. But, I mean, the more life I live, the more I realize, like, you just got to go after what you want. You can't can't sit back. It, it's not going to come to you. So you got to chase it. What else did you do to chase it outside of applying to be an intern and going to the rodeo school? Or are those your first two things that you used? Uh, the rodeo school was probably, yeah, the first. Yeah. I mean, I just kind of started looking – online and that was a place that had all the gear ready for you had professional instructors so i was like that that'd be perfect and it said you know beginners to professionals if you just want to brush up your skills and that sounded great to me that's one thing about the sankey schools that i've not seen at any other school is that they'll provide you all the equipment and he's it's not going to be like it even like like some of the stuff is is okay if it's really used but like um I mean, like, you're going to have a glove without holes in it. You're going to have a good bull rope that's not just, like, really like a limp handle that's just going to roll over as soon as you come off. You know, like, there's there's a lot of those little things, a good vest, um, a good helmet. And so that's – boot. if you can take your own boots, that's usually about all you need. So that's, that's a really neat – because, to be honest, if you've never been on a bareback horse, a saddle bronc, or a bull, and you want to try it <clears> – <throat> That's a big investment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Bronc riding, I mean, the saddle alone, new, is $2,500. Just the saddle. Yeah. Shaps are another five, 600. Boots. Vest is, you know, three or 400. So in the, in, in the bronc riding, you're looking at $3,500 investment. Unless you got somebody who, you know, you can borrow it from. But in that scenario, you got to know someone because you don't want to just borrow any equipment, you know. Anyway, so you go to a school, something like that, uh, in the bull ride, and I'd say, you know, if you had to buy everything new, you're looking at twelve to $1,500. So um, <clears throat> the point is, is because what if, turns out, you don't pursue it as a career, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, which is most people. Yeah. Most people are not going to do that. So uh, that's, what's, that's what's cool about that. But um I'll probably even send you with a rope. We'll fix you up, get you, you know, get you fixed up. And then that way it's just, you're just one step ahead. But even if you don't, even if you just go there with just good boots, you'll be able to, uh, 
you'll know enough about the equipment. You'll be able to move a little quicker on, on getting everything fixed up for yourself. So, but, uh, yeah, we'll spend some time over the next six, seven weeks, get helping, getting you ready. We will be gone. You know, you'll, you'll be here for a week by yourself during, uh, December before you head up there. Cause we'll all be gone to the Niffer, Niffer, Niffer sail barn. So, yeah, that's what we were in Fort Worth one year, like a long time ago. And, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember if somebody somebody asked or somebody was like somebody real young was like, What's that tag on the back of that horse? <laughs> oh, that's a sailborn tag. <laughs> the Niffer Sailborn. But it was an NFR horse. So had a and they still had the the old tag on him. They put a they'll put a tag on their on their on their butts. They kinda glue it when they go through the, like all the animals that go through the NFR. The, well, the rough stock at least. The, it's like, I don't know, four inches by six inches sticker, and it's got the NFR emblem, and it'll have a number there. Rather than brand them, because there'll be a lot of horses there and bulls that'll have the same brand. You know, there might be two bar 37s, you know, and so they'll use this unique tag for that week. Well, if you're a stock contractor and you're going to a rodeo six weeks later, you're probably not going to run him in the shoot and strip that sucker off. Yeah. You're going to let him wear it for a little while. So, what did I draw? Did they just buy this horse? <laughs> yeah, they bought him at the Niffer Sailborn. No, that's one of the best in the world you're getting on. <laughs> anyway, that's the uh, that's the joke there, inside joke. Donnie loves inside jokes. I'd love to be a part of one someday. You got any questions for him? Um, what, what drew you to agriculture? Like you said, that one school you're like, they didn't have any ag. Did you take, were you in FFA, high school, anything like that? Nope. So growing up, it was kind of that same thing. I thought you grew up in it and went on to pursue it. But uh, after I graduated high school, my brother got a job in agriculture, just kind of starting out, nothing serious. But I was like, oh, my brother had the same upbringing as me. Uh, he got into it. So it was, again, just kind of got to go after it. It's not going to come to you if you just sit back and wait for it. So. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> did I? Th- I thought you said your family farmed. No, sir. I did not say that. You've been. You said something about farming. He worked for a farm. He said he was driving spread manure. Oh yeah, I was spreading fertilizer before I came here. That was my job before this. Uh, oh, it wasn't for my it was family. It was just for a, a job. Yeah. Oh dang! So I thought you like grew up around it. No. So, what'd your family do? Uh, my dad's a pastor, and my mom just works at a bank. Wow, so you're like a city kid. Town. Town Town kid. (laughs) (laughs) Dang. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, it's even more cool, you know. Hopefully we can. It's like a complete 180 of what I grew up with. Yeah. Wow. See, I was like thinking, because like, I've got acres of wheat. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking like, man, if I were to one day get a tractor and, I mean, this could be the farm kid then. Yeah. Because I don't know anything about farming. So you're not going to be that for me. I mean, I could talk to somebody. Yeah. You could feel a little know. reading. Yeah. I didn't graduate, so. YouTube it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, Donnie, I mean, uh, you're not the only one going to a school. Donnie's going to one next week. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to. Uh, the, Veter, the Veter School in uh, Coors Gold, California. Yeah. What's his first name? Something Veter? George Veter. George Veter. Yeah. George Veter. Yeah. Um, Dawson Hay, Lefty. Lefty yeah. Who else? What other Bronco riders uh, do you know? Seems like there's a lot of good ones. Jake up there. Finley was there last year, but I don't think, I don't know that he's going to be there this year. Gotcha. Are you excited? Oh, super. Yeah. Yeah. He'll probably get on a bunch of horses. I imagine. I hope so. <laughs> That's what they try. Most schools, they'll have. That makes sure there's plenty of stock, and so it's usually just kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet for what you get on. I'm gonna venture to guess six for you, maybe at the most. Yours is a three-day school. Two. Is it just two? Yep, just a weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Oh dang. Okay, so I'm gonna change that to four. Uh, I bet you get on at least ten, maybe. Yeah. Yours is two days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like I I plan on getting on. Yeah. That many. Especially if they're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which they will be. Yeah. I'm sure they will be. Good, I mean, as as, as in, like, fit you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> We're 
Where y'all going this weekend, Joe? Uh, Belton. We're putting on a free all girls bull riding school. Who's we? Uh, me, Mandy Shipsky, and Misty Studley. Have I met them? With you? Yeah. I, I think at the finals that you went with me to. Mandy yep. was there for sure. Yeah, because Colt came up to you. He didn't have shoes on. That was her kid. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. So you're putting on a school for girls? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like since the Netflix show there's been more of an interest? Um, yeah. There- I mean, I've had girls reach out to me for sure and be like, where can I start and stuff like that. Yeah. And I just keep telling them, you know, find a good bull riding school where they're at. You know, that's kind of, that's not how I started. I just did it as a bucket list type thing. Yeah. And so, I mean, that, and I tell them, I mean, if they have someone they trust, you know, go to a practice pen that's got some little jump kickers and just try it out. I mean, that's all you can do because you're not going to really know if you want to do it till you try it. When did you get on your first one? When I was 17. So in. Almost 10 years ago. <laughs> you're 26? Yeah. yeah. Dang, nine years ago. Yeah. How did you, but you had some stints in there where you probably didn't get on for a little bit because of injuries, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had to take pretty long breaks because of yeah. injuries, but I mean, I always worked through them. Like, I was right. always doing stuff. So, it's like, like, sometimes it never even seemed like I took time off. So, you think for the most part, aside from a few little breaks, you've been pretty much getting on bulls for nine years? I've gotten on a bull for every year for nine years for sure. Yeah. I don't think I've ever taken a full year off. Right, yeah. That's a, that's 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 a long time, almost. If I'm not mistaken, a decade. Yeah, ten years. Ten, my, how long's it been? Ten years. Um. So you, but but you being in North Carolina had to like. Tra- what percentage of your bull riding was done out of state? Probably eighty percent of it. Yeah. That's one hit, <clears throat> dude. Yeah. Yeah. She told me she's like, yeah, I used to drive to Texas like two times a month, like for the <laughs> weekend, and show yeah. up to work on Monday morning. I'd leave out because I, my job that I had back home, I was working at a horse barn, but I told them I could only work Monday through Thursday. Yeah, and I would work all day Thursday, get off at nine o'clock at night, and start driving to Texas. So Spend I'd, every dime on your weekend. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because you don't make a lot yeah. of money working at a horse barn, and then, yeah. I mean, a lot. I mean, I was making money because like a lot of the times like those women's bull ridings like you could do pretty well at them so right. i mean i was just i would drive there i'd get to texas sometime around friday afternoon enter the rodeo saturday depend on and then on sunday usually i was driving back but i would stop either in alabama or south carolina and get on practice bulls because i'd always i mean i was always looking for bulls to get on like yeah when even I mean, there. I can just remember trips where I was like, had a bull riding in New Mexico, and we drove, <laughs> or no, it was a bull riding in Window Rock, Arizona, and mm-hmm. I rode bulls every single day, whether yeah. it was a practice pin or a rodeo. Like I was, I stacked my trips so I could get on bulls every day. Yeah, yeah. So growing up, I grew up in Memphis and uh, Memphis, Texas, and we just didn't have practice pins. We just didn't have. You know, like some, there'd be some people an hour or so away, you know, but like being, you know, 14, 15 years old, kind of, you just, it's few and far between. There's, there's a lot, there'll, there'll be a long time before you get to get on again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I knew that in high school. And then when I got to college down there around College Station, spent some time, College Station in Huntsville, um, number one, all the towns were closer to each other. Yeah. Like, you get up here around where we're at now, like, 30, 40 miles yeah. each town. Yeah. There may be a little bull town like, you know, Newcastle or something, yeah. you know, in McGargle, yeah. halfway <laughs> in between. But, like, it's – it's like, McGargle doesn't have it, not even a yellow light. You just kind of go through it. Yeah. You might slow down to a little bit. But, anyway, the point is, it's like, up there, it's like 30, 40 miles before you see – and there might be one or two houses – Well, when you get down to, like, Huntsville, College Station, that part of Texas, it's like every 20 miles, you got a major town. Yeah. And there's more people in between. Some of the towns, you can't really even tell where they stop. Yeah. Because there's just so Mm -hmm. many people. And, and of course, it's still Texas, so there's still a lot of agriculture, a lot of, like, um, you know, cowboys and rodeos, and all these towns have rodeos, all of them. 
And so, man, when I went down there and I was in college, it was like paradise. And I never took it for granted. Like the fact that I could drive and, and within an hour be behind the shoots of a good practice pen, I never, not one time took that for granted just because I knew. And then I, I saved some money, sold some horses, bought some panels and some and some bucking shoots. And then my old man had some bucking horses and some bulls. And uh, and he was a pickup man, and uh, I was in heaven when we had our own pen. We didn't have to trailer anywhere. Golly, like I, I I just I knew the value of that, you know. And so when we came up here, I wanted to recreate it just because I knew we were going back to somewhere that like, I mean, like you guys have what you get tollers. Hour and a half. Like, like almost two, two hours. Almost two yeah. hours. Weatherford's like an hour and a half. And and so like Weatherford's not far, and that's great. But yeah. you know sometimes you don't want to overstay your welcome. Yeah. You know, like a college pin. Yeah. You know when you're not going to that college. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so that was what. I guess that's kind of what made me, um, get get pretty quick to the intern deal was just because like. Um, I'd lived in, even though it was in Texas, I'd lived in somewhere similar to an Iowa situation or North Carolina situation where you just can't, as bad as you might want to, you can't just go get on today. You know, like you can't just 30 minutes later, you're getting your bull rope warmed up. Like that's just not possible. Yeah, well, that's what I eventually did was I got those horse round pin panels and my buddy had a, really really old set of mexican style bucking shoots and he was like you can borrow them if you can get them on a truck and trailer and we did it and we made this little crappy arena and yeah i've, I've seen some of your throwback <laughs> videos on yeah there. it was not safe yeah <laughs> but but we made it work because you know like our back our back pin situation was probably the worst but the arena itself like i never i only bought one mean bull from a guy but I kind of wanted to fight him. That's the only reason why I bought him. But he was mean. But he didn't really buck. He just would run you into the fence. But yeah, yeah. So it was not bull, you know, bull quality panels. But right. That's just. I mean, I just wanted something, you know, even if I could get on a breed bull type bull and get on just to buck. Bulls, bulls are a little different, a little easier. Much easier, yeah, you know, easier. like you can almost just have like a trailer you back up to the chute, you know, if you had mm-hmm. to um, have you a little pin and it could be you and one other person. Mm-hmm. Um, there's stories of guys that it's just they buck them by themselves, but um, which is pretty sketchy. <laughs> That's pretty sketchy, but super easy. Like my brother and I have bucked them just he and I like all the time we used to um, just because same guy flank. He'll pull your bull rope and then jump down and really throw the gate. And then, you know, especially if it's not a mean bull, super easy. So if they're mean, it'll kind of add a little bit into the mix if you get hung up. But essentially, not the same with horses. You need some people to buck some horses. You need a big enough arena. You will need a quality de-rigging shoot. Mm -hmm. De-rigging shoot's really important if you want to, like, save your equipment and, like, use it again, unless you're kind of like a kamikaze type. (laughs) Cowboy, <laughs> but um yeah so that that but that that's the ultimate is finding somewhere where you can get on yeah mm-hmm. because you can't you can you can only do so much without actually riding you know like you can only stand on a medicine ball so long you know or yeah. get on even a drop barrel or a buck ride even even really without getting on i don't even think you really know what to work on on those things. Right. Like, I think the, like once you've been on those things help a lot more cause you know what yeah. to well, focus on. Well that, and then controlling your adrenaline, I think is a major part, which you don't get, but from getting on a bunch of yep. stock yep. because like then first, you know, 10 bulls, like you're probably going to black out at yep. some point in the ride and you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to control yourself. I mean, granted you're, you don't want to think while you're on them, but you want to be awake Right. So, and I think you kind of miss out on that, learning how to control that without getting on. 100%. Yeah. If you're, so if you don't have somewhere to get on, now all of a sudden you're entering rodeos. 
and going to happen. You're going to draw the rankest thing they have. You enter a bull riding, whatever bull is, the, the one bull that you shouldn't get on, that's what you draw, 100%, like all the time. Yeah. Like if you go to three bull ridings, two of those, you're getting on the rankest bull there. So, um, right. I mean, that's I mean, just. I got on a, a, my bull at finals I went to last year. Yeah. I did not want to get on that bull at all. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's what, that's the way it happened. My brother, when he first started, dude, this joker would draw deep, <laughs> deep. But anyway, um, so with that being said, what Joe is, what Joe said is probably the most important of everything we're talking about. It's like, you've got to control your emotions. And you don't know what emotions are going to be running through your head. And so that's what I think that that's what I want to get you ready for in December. That way it's like, all right, you've at least felt it a few times where maybe that those bulls now all of a sudden you go there and you're ready to work on something. You know what I'm saying? Like you've at least gotten the adrenaline, you know, where the blackout adrenaline out of the way. But, um, but man, it's going to teach you a lot. It's going to teach you a lot about life. So, man, it's a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money down the drain. That's why they said, <laughs> which song, which song is it? Um, um, is it Amarillo by Morning where he just literally says a lot of money down the drain? Or is it, uh, I'm much too young to feel this damn old. I was, that's what I was thinking. I think it is. I can't remember. But anyway, a lot of money down the drain. Yeah. <laughs> so, but. As I Sterling guess, Crawley just, would say. If you break even, it's a free vacation. Exactly. This is what you, I mean, it's, a, it's a, just what you want to get out of life, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it really comes down to your goals, and if your goal is to, to be rich, you need to pick something different. Yeah. But J.B. Mooney and myself would disagree. Yeah. I wonder how much, what J.B.'s number is up to. <clears throat> 90 point bull rides? Uh no, like he's won over seven million dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. It's got to be at least seven point two by now. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so, I mean if you're good, you can be both. Yeah. yeah. What is Stetson Wright's the the youngest Mill- to reach? Yeah, he's a mil- he's million. the youngest millionaire. I think was I yeah. might, unless someone else has broken it. But I well, think. I think it just happened this year. Yeah. So surely nobody else has gotten there. But <clears throat> yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> So, it's definitely possible. It's definitely possible. I'm not saying you can't make money riding bulls. But if your goal is to solely make money, then there's probably some easier yeah. ways. That's that's what I'm getting at. You can absolutely make a lot of money riding bulls. But that's not why you're going to be doing it, you know. Money money shouldn't be your motivator. Yeah. So, there may come a point where you go to a specific rodeo or you have a specific season where the money is really important and you find yourself getting on that bull you don't want to get on because you need to win that check because you're now using bull riding to pay your bills. That's a different conversation. Yeah, I'm just saying like the blanket statement to get started, it's just like, man, I want to make a lot of money. I'm going to start riding bulls. <laughs> yeah. It's probably not the way that you go about it. So... Which which is why it makes sense for you to be an intern here, you know, where you're not going to make a lot of money working, but you have access to that practice pin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Do you know of any that were around you? No, I can't say practice that. Practice pins? Let's talk about something else. What about girls? Got a girlfriend? No. Did you have one in Iowa? I did. Yeah. Wait, you left her? No. For this uh, deal? No. <laughs> I was about to say baller. I mean, I would. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I didn't. How long ago? Uh, it was. I mean, it was pretty recent. Yeah. But. Tell us about it. Let's talk about it. She break Lay down heart. on the couch. Yeah. She break your heart, you break hers. Was, I don't know. Kind of a mutual parting ways. Yeah. It was It was good for a while. I know they say, always say it's mutual. It's never mutual. I know. So I, <laughs> so people can conclude I probably got dumped. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. At the end, I mean, it just, you know, there wasn't that fun feeling anymore. So it was just. Yeah. How long did y'all date? Years. Years? Yeah. Wow. Three. Four. Wow. That is a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, how recent? Like, are are we dealing with a broken man here is what I'm trying <laughs> to figure out. Maybe. 
<laughs> yeah. So, that recent. Wow. Do you do you want me to break break your podcast? Break my break podcast? It, just break it wide open. Yeah. If you really want me to lay down. Uh, no I mean you can if you want. But I mean, I don't want you to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie might start crying if you did that. Yeah, Donnie would start crying. Sorry, I was just trying to so, the mood. <laughs> it was a dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you were or what you are is on to the next one. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you get out of a relationship and um, the best thing to do is you just like, you just get in really good shape to make them jealous and yep. then you go start riding bulls and punching bulls. Yeah. Right? I got a long ways to go on that and that's. That's hey, part man. of the bull riding, too. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey, man. Mm-hmm. You just got to keep on keeping on. I don't think you have that long to go, that far to go. Dude, I think if you lost 10 pounds, that'd be a oh, big talking, yeah. different. Oh, yeah, no, we're not talking about girls anymore. We're talking no, about I thought you – never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but you you shed 10 pounds. Like, you got the you got the height. Like, you're ready to be a bull rider. Trying to. Everybody told me I should have wrestled. I just watched basketball from the bench. Yeah. You played basketball? I watched basketball. Okay. From the bench and yeah. practiced. I did too. Yeah. I got really good at spinning a basketball on my finger. I, me too. That's <laughs> it. That's like all I can do. I can't shoot. I can't make a layup. Did you play football? Yeah. Yeah. If you're in Iowa, you got to, right? Yeah. I was going to say. <clears throat> you didn't want to in college? No. Probably couldn't have. I mean, nobody really talked to me. I wasn't that overly, like, physical. I wasn't. Like nobody as in nobody or nobody as in, like, schools? Schools. Oh, okay. <laughs> schools, weren't, <laughs> schools weren't coming sure my way. you friends, Dale. Golly. <laughs> you can't set me up like that and expect me not to at least say it. Um, what position? Center. I like it. Everybody needs a good center. Dude, I had a center um, who he was... Six five, maybe six four. Have you ever met Big Tex, the the resting rhino? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The resting rhino, but no, I have not. He was large man, large man, and um, he was deaf, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. He had, he was pretty hard of hearing, and uh, so like whenever you know I'd do my call, I'd have to like, you know, really like. He he never really was off sides because I had to I used a hand signal uh-huh. rather than like he wasn't going off a of hearing he was going off a of feel, and uh, but man your boy got in some trouble when he would take a step back because like I was like a short little compared to him at least little bitty quarterback like right behind this mountain of a man and if he ever like sometimes he would like get anxious like he was about to really have to duck down underneath somebody like whether he was you know tackle or if there was like a nose guard on him or whatever so he would like kind of like brace for it and and with with his right foot he would go back six inches and when he did that and stepped on my toe play was over (laughs) like I could not move like it's like I was anchored to the ground and it looked so silly on film because like I got the ball and I just like fall back like nothing it doesn't look like anyone is touching me it just looks like I fell straight back and so like how many times did this happen uh earlier in the season it probably happened twice a game for a couple of games and then he got you know it was like he got yeah. yelled at enough where he you know he didn't do it anymore it, i mean it, it might have happened five times total early you. in the season but it was god it was funny but uh yeah good center man they're priceless I could, yeah so anyway <laughs> That's why, and then we got to where we would, I would just take it from a shotgun position. <laughs> he was good at that. He was good at <clears throat> shotgun. So, how how did he hear you? How how do you know when to snap? Yeah, how would that work? It was on him. Yeah, so he would just kind of watch me, and then like, and then like, I'd give him signal, and then, I mean, like they had to watch. They had to watch. My guys had to watch the ball. That he he knew a rough, a mm-hmm. rough, you know time frame of when we were going to go but yeah he had to and i and i had to yell really loud so i would yell really loud but then they were going on him you know what i'm saying yeah so they just had to be paying attention so 
it worked. I mean, we didn't get a lot of offsides calls, but not any more than the next team, I didn't feel like. So, yeah, they just kind of look over. If the deep defensive, if the, deep, if the D line is coming at them, they block them. <laughs> <laughs> so, same thing that the D lineman did. But anyway, football. I loved it, but I just loved rodeo more. But anyway. Not that anybody was calling me either. <laughs> I was gonna say where nobody you... wanted to talk to me either. Yeah, I tried to go. I, I've sent some tapes to some junior colleges, and they said I could come be on the practice team, but that was it. So I just wasn't big enough to even consider playing. Yeah, college football. Yeah, yeah. Five ten is not that large of a quarterback. So yeah, but so um. What's your plans? What you got? What you're still developing? You got any goals? You got any plans that, as far as bull riding, as far as like why you're here? Uh, a lot of it just has to do with learning. Uh, learning about being around cattle, horses, or like livestock in general, really. Um, yeah, hopefully I can learn more about bull riding. Uh, when I was going to the school, I hadn't really decided yet in my mind. Like, is this something I'm really gonna pursue? Like, as a career like something I want to do on the weekends kind of the deal or is it something that you know check off the bucket list you know if I got if I just wasn't good at it which I'm not saying I think I'd be good at it right away because that's just not very reasonable but yeah yeah I was trying to figure that out so kind of the same thing here figure out if that's something I really want to get even more serious about or if it's because in your, in your video, it sounded like you were, like, primarily concerned with, with bull – not primarily, but you were more concerned with bull riding. But in the FaceTime interview, it seemed like it was more about ranching. I don't know. I guess I saw ranching as, like, more attainable than, like, the bull riding career. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, with the rodeo stuff, definitely bull riding is, like, I'm not interested in uh, bucking horses. Yeah, those things scare me. After, yeah. especially after seeing some of the falls you took on Netflix. Yeah. those are those are That's gnarly. Usually, everyone's first thing they talk to me about when they say that they saw the the Netflix show are people staying in the Airbnb out here. There's some uh, they rode motorcycles cross country. They just booked it. They didn't even know who we were, uh. and then they saw that like, then they saw who who owned the di- the Airbnb. And they watched. They binge watched the whole show. Before they came here yesterday, yeah. so they were like, he, "I walked up and he's wearing a riding bulls, punch of fools cap, and he's like, you know, he was like, oh my gosh, that Donnie took some spills, <laughs> didn't he? It's like the first thing people talk about. But by the way, yes, if you'd like to book the Airbnb, it's right outside the warehouse, and uh, it's in Newcastle, Texas. Plug. Um, yeah, so there's not a wrong answer, ever. It was really just more. Um, I felt like there was. You know, you were there was less talk about bull riding in the second conversation, which was fine either way. But I could see how it's like, you know, you're here to learn about ranching, and that is a very, like you said, attainable thing to check off the list. Whereas bull riding, you don't know how you're going to feel about it. You haven't even done it yet, so you're going to see how that goes. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I don't know. I want to put. I want to. I have to have a little bit better ground school with students before they get on a bull. So that's just like yesterday was the start of it. I want to have maybe three, four, five more sessions where we talk about the ride, dismount, equipment, shoot procedure, all those things before you actually get on a bull. Because I got to where in the, like a lot of guys, I would just throw them on. <laughs> Cause like, Having having been around bulls like what JB would load, you know, I I I'm less concerned with putting people on frostbite yeah. style bulls. However, or five eleven. I feel like five eleven is less dangerous than frostbite, even could be in some scenarios. But <clears throat> um it's just so dangerous. And the less you know, the more dangerous it is. Like so that's the other thing. You've probably heard us talk about it on the podcast, but you know you could die, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not not something I think, oh, I'm just going to go get on a bull. Yeah. It'll be easy. Like, 
no, I know there's it's risky. I mean, okay. You listen, listen every to time, like yeah. every yeah. time, yeah, yeah every time it's risky. Yeah. yeah. Does not matter how gentle they are. Right. Literally anything can happen. Yeah, and there's ways. There are ways to mitigate risk yeah. and minimize risk. So, like, you can learn things. For instance, Willie. One thing we're working on right now that I probably talk to him about more than his actual ride is his dismount. Like, he's got this weird kickover, but he like he wants to like watch the bull as he's coming off of the whore, the bull, and it like twists his body and it, it makes him stay right next to that bull. Whereas, yeah, he's if, always like in a good position to get kicked. I feel like you see what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. And the way his back, it's because he when he just he doesn't like chuck his chin. Right. Yeah. He needs to. Like, yeah, he needs to roll out. He needs to like because your body's gonna follow your eyes. So like when you're when you're riding this bull, when it's time to get off, you want to look over your shoulder. And it, when you look this way, like over your shoulder, if you're left-handed, you get off on the left. If you're right-handed, you get off on the right. So you would being right-handed, you're gonna get off your bull on the right. Well, if you look over your right shoulder, that's gonna put you moving in an opposite direction as the bull. See what I'm saying? So that bull will be moving away from you. If you just look right there, you're still going to be pretty close to the bull. You're, there's more likelihood of you getting stepped on. He can turn around and hook you better. You're giving your bullfighter less of a chance to distract the bull. Anyways, there's some there's some fundamentals to an, a, a good dismount. And uh, he's had a few injuries as a result of not executing those fundamentals. Uh-huh. So and they've been minor, thankfully. But they could be major. So that's one thing that we're trying to work on with him. Um, but that, that I feel I'll, I'll take responsibility, part responsibility for that was just I mentioned it in the beginning, but we didn't, we didn't really hound on it like they will at that school. Lyle is, <clears throat> he's just been in the game for so long and um, he's seen people die in the arena you know, like with his own eyes. And so when you, he's also very meticulous, which there's a lot of like, my old man told me this. We went to one of Lyle's schools early, early on. And he was like, usually like those, like the greats, the greats. Like if you, if you interact with um, like Trevor Brazil or um, Ty Murray, like they'll have, they're different. You know, uh-huh. JB Mooney. They're different. There's something, and 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 they're unique. Uh-huh. And when you talk to them, like you can sense that. And there's little things that they'll do that are different. And it makes sense because, like, if they were average, then they would appear as just everyone else does. Well, these guys aren't average. Lyle Sankey's not average. He's gonna do something. He's gonna be unique. And one of the things that's like, he's very very meticulous, and everything is calculated. And my old man was like that too, especially with um, cowboying, like the way you hang your latigo, the way you handle your back cinch, the way you put your saddle pad on your horse, like everything had a reason. And um, <clears throat> so same thing with, uh, with Lyle when you go to the school, like everything will have a reason. Like if you're going to pull your tail, what's the reason in your dismount? Well, maybe – you're right-handed and the fence is on your right. So you need to get off on the left. So you're going to pull your tail before you get off on the left. That way you don't get hung up. Or maybe he's turning back to the right. All right, reach down, pull your tail. That way you can get off on the left. Because you don't want to just dive off of the left with a full wrap still. See what I'm saying? So there's little things like that that you'll go through beforehand that um, are meticulous, but there's a reason for them. Mitigating risk because bull riding is dangerous enough, you know. So, what size cowboy hat you wear? Do you know? I have a big old noggin. I Looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you it. know what that means. Big brain. Yeah, big old dinosaur brains. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because I don't know that Willie's helmet will fit you. Mine might. Mine was too big for Willie, right? I don't know. Joe's I wore won't. it. I got a pretty big head. Joe's won't. I don't think it's that big of a head. I don't. Think yeah. You don't think his head is that big? No, I don't think. It. My head's as big as your two head. You have a big head. Yeah, I got a big head. I got a big melon. Yeah. It's not just hair either. Yeah, it's brains. Well, uh, just like what you said. No. <laughs> I think there's more roots, like like hair follicle roots. Yes. It, I do need a haircut <laughs> in Same. a bad way. 
Do you have any questions for these two? Oh, uh, I guess not any that I can. Or me? Put me in a, on the, on the spot. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it's hard to think of questions. So I'll just tell you. Make sure, like in the beginning, to seek wise counsel. Like, don't look too deep in the dumb a holes. What they got to say? What do you mean? Like, are you talking about rodeo? Yeah, like yeah. Bull riding, especially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Be careful who you're listening to, because bull riding is interesting, just like all rodeo. Like, mm-hmm. there's gonna be everybody and their brothers gonna be telling you like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Well, screw them. Like, <laughs> you need to, like, pay attention to who you need to pay attention to, and just stay focused and stay the course. If it's what you want to do, yeah, then do it. Make sure that if you're listening to someone, they've gotten where you want to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, if you're listening to, like, a, you know, just a jackpot king type guy who is a really big fish in a tiny, tiny pond, you know, he's he's just going to have a different mind. There's, because that's the thing about rodeo. It's like everyone is their own boss. And so everyone is and one of the things that is required is going to be confidence like at some point you're just going to have to be confident in yourself and some people have a lot of false confidence but it's better than no yeah. confidence yeah <laughs> yeah false which, confidence is better than no confidence correct yeah so um which is funny coming from dale brisby but why you keep looking at me because i was going to say like you know like when that kid messaged me i, I needed to change my spur rouse yeah yeah <laughs> I th- I seen this kid the night before walking around the bar oh. with all his stuff on, and he messaged me saying that I needed to change. My he spirit. saw you. I thought maybe it was just like social media. No, like well, he messaged me on Instagram yeah. the next day telling me, but I mean, I didn't ride. Like this was recent. This was only like two months ago. There's gonna be a lot of people that's never been on anything in their life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if they wear leggings, their 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 shaps in the bar. Don't take their advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. If they wear their bull riding spurs into the bar. So. That was probably, I was, there was a junior high road. I don't know. I could see one. like if JB, sorry to interrupt, no, but good. I just got to qualify good. that. That like, I could see JB like if he, if he had to run, if long round, like somewhere at Cowboys or something, yeah. or if there was like some special bull riding at, <laughs> That's at Billy different. Bob's. Like, yeah. <laughs> I could see him. If he recognized the guy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If he's got, like, he would probably take his spur, but, like, maybe there's a short round and he knows it's going to be two hours. And so, like, he can see the bar right there and he wants to go have a beer. And he walks over there and grabs a beer. Like, if he's also wearing a world champion buckle, then you can, okay. Or, like, have their face on the side of a bus in Vegas (laughs) or something. Like, (laughs) it's probably okay. Yeah. 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 Anyways, Junior Rodeo, Iowa. Yeah, in Waterloo at Cattle Congress. Uh, I went there. Some people I know were there, and I went to watch their daughters, and there were, like, dads walking around. They had their spurs on and stuff. I thought that was funny. Yeah. They Bull riding spurs? Yeah. Yeah. They were, yeah, they were just walking around watching their kids. They're sitting in the bleachers. They're not riding. No. It Ooh. was the junior, oh. junior high. Walking spurs. They were, they got they got their walking spurs on. Yeah, yeah. see those a lot. Yeah. Walking spurs. You'll probably see that more often than anything. I don't even take it off my boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just be careful of those. But there's I'm not saying there's there's not something you can learn. You can learn from some of those situations. Just <laughs> learn just, what not to do. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Maybe that's what we should do. Like we need some sort of bet where if you lose the bet, you've got to like go to a rodeo and wear shaps, <laughs> and like you're not entered. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should. We we went to a bull riding in uh, Wichita Falls a couple of weeks ago, and I was walking into the stand. I got there late and met, and met them guys. I was walking in the stands, and this guy just got off his bull, had his vest, his shaps, and everything still on, walking up into the stands <laughs> right in front of me, and he he turns around, looks at me. Turns again, he's like, you look familiar. And I was like, I, I get that sometimes, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I got a real <laughs> symmetric face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just turned around, kept on walking, and he just sat in the stands for the rest of the bull riding with all this crap on. 
we got to do some sort of bet. You know, like we did a bet the other day. Last year we did one. We had a, a like a cr- cussing jar, but it was tally marks on a whiteboard. And then whoever had the fewest, everyone for each tally mark had to give the person who had the fewest a dollar for each of their tally marks. So I ended up having to give it like $63 to Joe. She had the fewest. And then last week we did one where we had to quit something for two everyone weeks. had to quit something for two weeks and i he did tobacco i did scrolling on my news feed and somebody else did uh what did K- willie do katrin did sugar yeah, alcohol. yeah. <laughs> willie willie, willie lost down. first <laughs> yeah <laughs> willie like lost within the first like two days i gave yeah. up soft drinks so no sweet tea no soda no so we all we all gave her 50 bucks so she won again we need to do that same thing, but <clears throat> whoever loses has to wear like full rodeo gear into the Thomas and Mac during one of the perfs. Oh man, a free ticket to the perf! But you gotta wear <laughs> you gotta wear your vest and your shaps. I would. I, I would, would go repeat. all out. I would put my boots and spurs on too, and tie yeah. suckers on. Like, you might as well <laughs> have my mouthpiece hanging out my mouth. You might, you might as well. Like oh, try, to, try to sneak behind the shoots and like, <laughs> or or just take your bull rope, you know, and hang it up like like on a railing somewhere. And, and yeah. Like, start, just warm just <laughs> and or and like walk up, try to get it in, like stop, like security stuff. <laughs> I, I'm entered. I'm entered. <laughs> that sounds like fees. that I, sounds why like would a, I'd be wearing this if I wasn't entered. Mm. That, that sounds like a really it. good Dale Brisby video. Yeah, <sighs> I've wanted to make one like that where I walked around and uh, tried to hustle people for entry fee money. <laughs> Dang, that'd be a funny place to do it. <clears throat> yeah, either there or I feel like you'd be too recognized there, though. Yeah, that's why. Like I thought about like Fort Worth. Because they got that, like, stock show deal. Yeah, there. and there's a yeah, lot of people yeah. that aren't there for the rodeo. Well, there's a lot of people that are, like, they don't, like, it, it's it's a novelty. Th- like, it's a yeah destination. Like a, a tourism. Tour- yeah, there's not a lot of people. A tourist in, attraction. Invested in to the yeah. Western If industry. you're going to the NFR, odds are you know a little bit about rodeo. Yeah, a little bit. So. Um, definitely know who Dale Brisby is. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, maybe stockyards. Stockyards would be good. Stockyards, that, and you know, that—that's just yeah, you know, it'd be good. We gotta do that. Yeah, just Dale, mic me up, mm-hmm. Dale Brisby. See it, see how much. Hey, I'm trying to enter a bull ride. Let me get some. You got any extra money for entry fees? <laughs> yeah, uh, like that dude that came up to us that time. Like this was like two years ago. It's the first time I had ever been to the stockyards, and we were outside. We were filming something for. The actual stock uh for the rodeo there and uh um, yeah that dude came up he's like you know how i enter the rodeo he said it we like he said you know how i enter the rodeo and i was like dude this is a pro rodeo like you don't yeah. just walk up and it like yeah enter. <laughs> you gotta call pro com <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, no like how do i en- like enter the build like how do i get <laughs> like why the heck do you say it like that <laughs> <laughs> no like which door and he like he was like I just got out of prison, like, insane stuff. I was like, dang. Yeah. The door's right over there. This is where you buy <laughs> tickets, man. This is where you buy tickets get in. That's the door. Uh, well, um, we usually, at the end of these, we give life advice. You got any life advice for the viewers, for the listeners? Is it okay if I repeat myself? Yeah. Just the chasing your dreams. I mean, nothing's going to come to you. Like I said before, it's just you got to go after it. I mean... There's nothing you can do. You can sit around and think about it all you want, watch YouTube videos, but unless you do something, it's not going to happen. Yep. <clears throat> I like it. Mine would be uh, pay attention. It don't cost you a dime. So, meaning like just look around. There's a there's a lot of things you can do that are free. You know what I'm saying? Um, like showing up on time. Like that's free. Uh, what else is free? Having a good attitude is free. Um, going the extra mile is free and it's usually not crowded. Um, hustle is free. Like literally if you think about in the workplace, you know, paying attention is free. So if you're in the workplace, like those are things that like 
are going to make you better at your job. You're going to stand out, maybe not right away, but over time you will. And, uh, and they, they don't cost you anything extra. They only benefit you. So I think people underestimate those little things that are free, like paying attention. You know, Joe's good at paying attention. That's why I like whenever she's feeding. So what do you got, Joe? Um, I would say, like, you know, live a life that um, you're happy doing. You know, don't look at the money. Just be happy because, you know, you'd rather be, you know, life rich than money rich. Yep. Especially if you're in Rebels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, if you look if you look at life through the lens of money, you're going to get it wrong at some point. Even if your goal is to make money, like once you make it, you're going to look back and like what do you have to show for it? Because if you spend too much time on it, you're not going to have relationships. You're not going to have, you know. Anyway, try not to look at life through the lens of money. Yeah, man. Um, just uh, go do whatever you have fun doing. And if you're bad at it, do it till you're not bad at it anymore. That's <laughs> <laughs> all you can do. Yeah. You know, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Don't forget to text 940-353-0890. Text podcast to 940-353-0890. I think I responded to like 70 people this morning, and then I'll do it again, maybe another 100 today. So, like, there's a lot of people I don't get to text back, but um, there's a lot of people I do get to text back. So, yes, it is me texting. It's not Donnie. Donnie, have you ever texted anyone on that phone number? Um, just your mom. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like that answer. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, no, I have texted my mom back, and she doesn't say anything. Yeah. So, like, occasionally I will send, like, a, a, a mass text. Like, hey, have a great day. Um, have a great morning. Happy Monday. Um, buy one, get one starts Friday, something like that. But then like I'll also then I'll also engage and I'll like text people. And like I texted my mom back and I'd sent like a, a, a mass text and then she responded and then I responded again and like she just like ghosted me. I've done that like three times. My mom has ghosted me. So anyway. Please text me so that um I don't get ghosted by my mom. Nine four zero three five three zero eight nine zero, and we are on to the next one. Pow pow.